In order to understand what's really going on, we need to zoom out to the wider picture. The Chinese Communist Party is really waging a war against any competing ideology, especially organized religions. This includes Islam, it includes Christianity, but to an increasing extent also indigenous Chinese religions. In the Cultural Revolution in the 1970s, the Communist Party really tried to eradicate traditional belief, traditional customs, traditional culture, and especially religious belief. It was very messy, it was very uncoordinated. What we are now seeing under President Xi Jinping is a very sophisticated, well-funded and technologically advanced campaign to control ethnic minorities, religious believers, including house churches. Minorities such as Tibetans and Uyghurs are now living in a virtual police state where you have cameras on every street corner, where you have artificial intelligence, huge data streams flowing into databases that are being used for predictive policing to think this person is behaving different than they behaved yesterday. Uh, there's examples of people who didn't enter through the front door, but the house through the back door. And then this flags an alert at the police station. This is an unprecedented now internment campaign in Xinjiang, worse than ever in the history of China, and it's the largest incarceration of a particular ethnic minority since the Holocaust. Adrian Zenz, if you could talk more about this massive surveillance of the Uyghur Muslim minority community in Xinjiang, in China. China is rapidly developing cutting-edge surveillance technology. Um, it's becoming a world leader in terms of facial recognition that relies on three-dimensional technology, and then big data analysis. Smart city technology means that you are covering an entire city in cameras, in surveillance, in police information systems and databases. All the checkpoints that the Uyghurs have to go through, they swipe their ID, there's a facial recognition scan, there's airport-like scanners. All of this information, as I said in the video, is being combined. One of the most scary aspects, though, is the visiting relatives program, whereby hundreds of thousands, even a million, of Chinese government officials on a regular basis are visiting the homes of Uyghurs, spending time with them, staying overnight, asking them questions. Official government documents even say that this way the local people cannot hide what they really feel or think. They're asking questions. They give them pork to eat and see if they will take it or not. Of course, as a Muslim, they're not supposed to do that. This way, the Chinese are trying to find if people really believe in Islam, if they're conforming to communist ideology or not. All the information that they gather during these very intrusive family visits is being entered into this police app that Human Rights Watch was able to reverse engineer. Well, I'd like to bring in uh, uh, Rushan Abbas, a Uyghur American activist who's also uh, with us in D.C. She's the founder and director of Campaign for Uyghurs. After she spoke out against China's repression of the Uyghurs last year, her aunt and sister disappeared. Her aunt has since been released, but there's still no news of her sister. Her recent article in USA Today is headlined, I've Fought China's Slow Motion Genocide of Uyghur Muslims. Now my family are victims. Uh, Rushan Abbas, welcome back to Democracy Now! Uh, could you tell us your own response uh, to this report that came out and explain why you say there's a cultural genocide happening? Because the Uyghurs are being targeted because of uh, our ethnicity and our culture and our language and our religion, everything that makes Uyghur people unique is being treated as a crime. The Chinese ambassador Tsui told the reporters that the, the camps are set up there to make the Uyghur people normal persons. So all this unique cultural identity of the Uyghur people are making Uyghurs abnormal people. And our religion and our culture is being called illegal in China today, as Islam is completely being banned. Therefore, the, uh, the religion and the culture and the language are being treated as a mental disease. 
And when you hear about these reports of surveillance, um, facial recognition software, control of the Uyghur population, what do you understand has been taking place from your reports with, within uh, your family still there? The, the Uyghur people and the, our homeland is set up as a testing ground, as a pilot program. The Chinese government, the Beijing regime, is using this against the Uyghurs because they see the Uyghurs as a threat. And the, uh, strategically, the land of the, the Uyghur people are sitting on, the original owners of, is the strategic uh, epic center for Xi Jinping's Belt and Road Initiative, uh, gateway to Central Asia, to um, Europe and Africa. Therefore, they are using the surveillance system, high-tech, uh, ubiquitous cameras, facial recognition, softwares, and now they are exporting to the world. So what's happening in Xinjiang, what's happening in East Turkestan, uh, is not just there to suppress Uyghur people. This is a uh, security threat and the human rights threat, and uh, it's a threat for our freedom all around the world.